Throughout World War II, approximately 5 megatons of explosives were used. However, a single Trident II missile has the capability to carry 12 nuclear warheads, collectively amounting to the power of about 5 megatons of explosives. An American Ohio-class submarine has the capacity to carry 24 Trident II missiles, making it an incredibly powerful force. Though in practice, due to arms reduction treaties and practical considerations, these submarines often carry fewer missiles than their maximum capacity. Nevertheless, even with reduced armament, submarines remain a formidable threat, capable of stealthily approaching any location undetected and unleashing a devastating amount of firepower, surpassing the entire arsenal of some countries in an instant. Submarines serve a distinct purpose compared to other elements of a navy. While an aircraft carrier is designed to be imposing and conspicuous, showcasing a nation's power to the world, submarines operate on the opposite principle. Their intention is to remain unseen and undetected, an invisible and silent force that could be present anywhere at any moment, or nowhere at all. This stealthy nature gives submarines a unique advantage, enabling them to carry out various missions covertly and with surprise. Submarines, in a way, fulfill a role in psychological warfare, as an adversary can never be certain if a submarine lurks off its coast. While numerous countries possess submarines, the most potent and often largest ones are those equipped to launch ballistic missiles carrying nuclear warheads. Currently, only six nations are officially known to possess such submarines, namely the US, UK, France, India, Russia, and China. These submarines' capabilities underscore their significance as strategic assets in the realm of global military power. In addition to the confirmed six nations with nuclear missile-capable submarines, there is evidence suggesting that North Korea and Israel also possess submarines with similar capabilities. The very first submarine to be used for military purposes was called the Turtle. Constructed in 1775 by David Bushnell during the American Revolution, the Turtle had a distinctive shape resembling a walnut standing seven feet tall and measuring five and a half feet wide. It was designed to be operated by a single person and could submerge up to 20 feet deep for approximately half an hour. On September 6, 1776, the Turtle made an audacious attack on the HMS Eagle, a British warship anchored in New York Harbor. Despite the unsuccessful outcome of the attack, the Turtle holds historical significance as the first operational submarine utilized in combat. In modern times, military submarines can be categorized into two main types, each with its distinct mission. The first type is the attack submarine, which is more prevalent. These submarines are generally smaller in size and are designed for combat operations. They engage in close-range attacks on targets like enemy ships, using torpedoes, shorter-range missiles and other weaponry to neutralize threats. The second type of submarine is the Ballistic Missile Submarine (SSBN). These submarines are often larger, and serve as hidden mobile platforms for nuclear missiles. Their primary purpose is to act as a strategic deterrent. Being stealthy and capable of remaining undetected, these submarines ensure that even in the event of a nuclear first strike against their country, they would likely survive and have the ability to retaliate with devastating nuclear force. This second strike capability is a crucial element of deterrence in international relations and serves to discourage potential aggressors from initiating a nuclear conflict. Ballistic missile submarines play a crucial role in the concept of mutually assured destruction, where if any country were attacked with nuclear weapons and could retaliate with surviving nuclear capabilities, both the attacker and the attacked would face destruction. These submarines are seen as a form of nuclear deterrence as they reduce the likelihood of nuclear weapon use by ensuring retaliatory consequences. Due to the possibility that these submarines might outlive their country and government, they require independent authority to use their nuclear missiles. For instance, the UK's four ballistic missile submarines each have a letter locked in a safe, providing instructions to their commanders on what actions to take in the event that the UK is devastated by a nuclear strike. At the beginning of their term, each prime minister writes these letters with specific instructions for their country's ballistic missile submarines. However, these letters are kept unread and are destroyed at the end of their term. The Prime Minister can choose one of four potential options, instruct the submarines to take no action, place themselves under the command of an ally like the US or Australia, leave the decision to the commander's judgment, or retaliate and launch nuclear missiles at the attacker. The stealth of submarines is derived from being submerged in water. 
while publicly known to be capable of descending to depths of around 800 feet or 250 meters, American Ohio-class submarines are believed to be able to go much deeper. Once a submarine surfaces, it loses its stealth, especially in today's era of satellite tracking, making detection much easier for potential adversaries. Submarines must have the capability to remain submerged for extended durations to travel undetected from one part of the world to another. Most of the world's ballistic missile-equipped submarines are nuclear-powered, granting them virtually unlimited range. These submarines have reactor cores that only require replacement every few decades. Additionally, they are equipped with oxygen generators and desalinators, akin to nuclear-powered aircraft carriers. The primary factor that limits their deployment duration is their food supply. American nuclear submarines, which operate similarly to those of other countries, follow a system of having two fully staffed crews, the Blue and Gold crews. The Blue crew takes charge of the submarine during patrols, which typically last around 77 days. To ensure continuous deployment, different submarines' patrols are scheduled in a way that keeps submarines active at all times. Despite these lengthy patrol periods, Submarines in the U.S. Navy are reputed to offer the best food of any vessel. Some attribute the high-quality food on submarines to their small size, making it difficult for the chef to escape scrutiny if a meal turns out poorly. However, the main reason lies in submarines receiving a higher food budget compared to other vessels. Food holds significant importance in maintaining morale, especially considering that submarine duty is regarded as one of the Navy's toughest jobs. Fresh food has a limited shelf life, typically lasting a maximum of two weeks, leading to a decline in meal quality as the weeks progress. Eventually, submarines rely on canned, dried, or frozen ingredients as the available options. The declining food quality serves as a signal that the patrol is nearing its end, and at this point, the Blue Crew takes the submarine back to its home port, or an allied overseas port. Afterward, the Gold Crew arrives and both crews collaborate on a 25-day turnover period that involves restocking and maintenance tasks. Following this, the Blue Crew departs for vacation and subsequent training before the cycle begins anew. For most crew members, this repetitive cycle continues for years on end. Submariners also structure their daily routines in cycles. They work for 8 hours and then have 16 hours off, during which they engage in training, conduct maintenance, exercise, eat, and sleep. To compare the size of the largest submarines, look at a Boeing 747400 and an American Ohio-class submarine. The submarine is nearly 2.5 times longer and has a much larger hull circumference than the plane's fuselage. But it's not the world's largest. That title belongs to the slightly longer and wider Russian Typhoon-class submarine. These submarines are so big that they have a sauna and a small pool. However, on American and most other submarines, the amenities are limited. Submariners need activities during their three months of downtime without sunlight, but there isn't much space. The mess is the only open area not for work. Submarines often have gym equipment, but it's spread out, not in one room. On large Ohio-class submarines, a submariner's tiny bunk is their only personal space. On smaller submarines like the American Virginia class, there are more sailors than bunks. So junior sailors share bunks, with one working while the other sleeps, and there's no true personal space. Compared to surface Navy ships, submarines have limited communication with the outside world. Each submariner is given an email address for family messages, which are sent to the submarine when communication is possible. On board, a crew member reviews all messages to ensure no sensitive information is transmitted, such as news of a family death that could affect crew morale. Some believe it's better to wait until the end of the patrol to deliver such news, as there is no way to get sailors off the submarine during a mission. Communicating underwater is challenging because radio waves, which are commonly used for communication, cannot travel through salt water. However, submarines still need to receive orders and updates so they use specialized communication methods to maintain contact with command authorities during their missions. You're absolutely right. Very low-frequency, VLF radio waves have the ability to penetrate water to a certain extent, making them essential for submarine communication systems. 
Various navies operate large VLF transmitters for this purpose. For instance, the U.S. has transmitters in Maine, Washington, Hawaii, and other locations, while India and Australia also have their VLF stations. Although VLF signals can reach submarines as deep as 60 feet or 20 meters underwater, they have a significant drawback, very low bandwidth. This limitation prevents the real-time transmission of audio signals, and the most they can achieve is about 700 words per minute in text. To improve reception, some submarines can launch buoys to shallower depths, where they can receive VLF signals more effectively. However, submarines often face challenges responding with VLF frequencies due to their lack of large enough transmitters. As a result, they must ascend to shallower depths to have antennas protruding above the water's surface for responding. At this depth, modern submarines can establish rapid communications with satellites to download and upload information. You're right, VLF radio remains the primary communication method for most submarines, with some alternative techniques and new technologies under development for specific scenarios. Navigation poses a significant challenge for submarines because GPS and radar do not function underwater due to their use of higher frequency waves that cannot penetrate water effectively. Instead, submarines rely on sonar for navigation, where they generate sound and listen for its return to map their surroundings. However, using active sonar can compromise their stealth, making it a less favorable option. To navigate discreetly, Submarines utilize an inertial navigation system. This system comprises accelerometers and gyroscopes that track the submarine's movements relative to its last known accurate GPS position. This allows the submarine to navigate and operate effectively in stealth conditions without emitting detectable signals. As time passes from the last reliable reading, the accuracy of the submarine's inertial navigation system diminishes. After 24 hours, the estimated position can drift to about 1.15 miles or 1.85 kilometers from the actual location. While this technique combined with map consultation is usually sufficient due to the vast expanse of the open ocean, there are some submerged objects that submarines could collide with, like other submarines. Certain modern submarines are exceptionally well cloaked, making it challenging for another submarine even just feet away to detect them. An incident illustrating this occurred on February 3, 2009, when the British Navy's HMS Vanguard submarine experienced a significant collision while navigating the East Atlantic Ocean. The collision was with the French submarine Le Triomphant, seemingly by chance. Fortunately, both submarines were operating at low speed, resulting in no injuries. However, considering that both subs were equipped with nuclear warheads, the potential consequences of a more severe collision can only be imagined. Submarines are inherently dangerous, even during peacetime, as they are designed to operate in stealth, making it difficult to locate them if something goes wrong. Many countries with submarine fleets have rescue submarines theoretically capable of saving stranded submariners by attaching to the disabled sub and shuttling the crew to the surface. However, such rescue missions have been infrequent in practice. In some unfortunate cases, submarines sink due to system failures, and rescue attempts are unsuccessful before oxygen supply runs out. As submarine concealment technology improves, so does submarine tracking technology. There is speculation that there may come a time when nothing can hide in the ocean's depths. Nonetheless, submarines remain a critical aspect of modern navies. Currently, both traditional non-ballistic missile submarines and their torpedoes are effective and deadly, much like during World War II. Sonar-equipped submarines are among the best ways to track other submarines, creating a scenario where countries maintain submarine fleets in response to others doing the same. This is why hundreds of submarines are ready to strike at any moment, dispersed around the world, to ensure naval capabilities and readiness in a constantly evolving maritime landscape.